Parents of Tito's twin daughters, Stella and Mia, were born on November 30th with a surrogate mother in Kenya. Capture this moment, and I want to live in it for the rest of my life. Single and male, Tito thought it would be easier and more affordable to go the surrogate route outside of North America. After a long and emotional journey, Tito, who lives just north of Toronto, found a surrogate clinic based in India. Due to that country's laws, it outsourced the surrogacy to Kenya. And after being assured everything was ready for his return to Canada, the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi told Tito it wasn't. They came out and they said, uh, we can't give you the passports because you're a second generation Canadian. Even though Tito has lived in Canada since he was five, a change in Canadian immigration law nearly a decade ago prevents children born to second generation Canadians from automatically becoming Canadian citizens. To make the issue even more complex, the surrogate mother is Kenyan, but the egg donor was Indian. So Tito and his daughters are now stuck in immigration limbo. I have to sponsor my biological children. Uh, to come into Canada, and I said, well, what is the process? So the process can take anywhere between 6 to 12 months, and they just said, you have to wait here until you get the sponsorship approved. Lawyer Robin Seligman says the sponsorship route should work, and there's no reason the paperwork couldn't be expedited. They'd have to make sure the paperwork is fine, which I'm sure they're his biological children. And um, they have to do medicals. Everybody who's applying for permanent residence has to do medicals, but that could be done really quickly. After spending around $70,000 so far, Tito says money is stretched thin, and he's not sure how much longer he can afford to wait. The game plan is to get all this paperwork in first thing tomorrow morning. Um, hopefully my MPs or Immigration Canada's heard my story or something a miracle happens. A spokesperson from Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada told Global News it's willing to look at Tito's situation and that its top priority in cases like this is the child's safety. Matthew Bingley, Global News, Toronto. Two years ago, Tito began the process by finding and hiring a surrogate in Kenya to give birth to his children. Up until this week, it was relatively smooth sailing. He flew to Mombasa to meet his surrogate mother and newborn children and was due to fly back to Canada. That was until his final visit to the Canadian Embassy ahead of his flight when he was told that because he's a second-generation Canadian, his children are not eligible to receive Canadian passports as part of a revision to the Immigration Act. For more now, I'm joined by social media influencer and surrogate father Joseph Tito. He joins us from Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I just want to get the very latest. You've been in talks with the Canadian Embassy. You're trying to get passports for so that your girls can fly home with you. What's the very latest? Any new developments? Well, it was this was happened Friday, two days ago. So now it's the weekend and everything's closed. Um, in the meantime, uh, with my immigration consultant, if you actually look around, there's papers everywhere. I've started the sponsorship uh, of the girls, and I'm just waiting till tomorrow morning, first thing. I'm heading back to the embassy with all the papers, and that's really all I can do. It's been quite a journey for you just to get to this point. You've been blogging about it, preparing for the birth of your girls, welcoming them into the world. Uh, what an emotional ride, and now this roadblock. Uh, how? What was your reaction when you discovered that there was this issue in bringing the girls home? Well, um, after not having have slept for 48 hours and leaving Mombasa and arriving to Nairobi in the morning at five and getting into a taxi with my girls and my mom, who's been an absolute blessing, um, we get to the embassy, we wait for three hours and they tell me this and I just, I'm, I'm still speechless. Like, I feel like I'm in a movie. Um, I feel like this happens to people not in Canada. Um, I'm just, I'm just in shock. I just don't, I, I don't know. I'm in shock. I don't know what yeah, else I think to say. A lot I'm, of people would be so surprised to hear that there is this rule. So help us understand you're born in Italy. You're a Canadian citizen. So what changed in Canada's laws to stop you from bringing your girls home? Well, basically, I think it was like two years ago, um, 
update the, this law because of, I think, what was happening in Syria and everyone was just claiming to be Canadian and this and that. And people that were never in Canada that had Canadian passports were getting Canadian citizenship. And um, so this law passed basically because I was born in Italy. Uh, my mom was Canadian, so I automatically got Canadian citizenship. Um, which that means I'm Canadian. I was born Canadian. Um, I live in Canada. I pay taxes in Canada. I went to school in Canada. Um, but because I'm second generation Canadian, uh, my children are not eligible for citizenship. So the thing that pisses me off is that before I even started this journey, I looked into this and I contacted the Nairobi, the high commission here in Nairobi. I spoke to them on the phone. I gave them my passport number. I spoke to my clinic. Um, I'm so anal with everything. I have everything filed, everything perfect, everything in order. I had more papers than I had to fill out, filled out. So if I would have known this from the beginning, I would have worked around it and figured it out. But I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I, this law needs to be changed for like case to case. Like I live in Canada. I am, I work in Canada. I don't know what else to say. Like, so what's next now? You said you are getting help from an immigration lawyer. Uh, you're looking at now sponsoring your daughters just to bring them to Canada. So are there any other avenues that you can um, look at other than, you know, getting an exemption from the Canadian embassy and the Canadian government? Um, well, um, I do also have an Italian passport. Um, so after the Canadian um, uh, consulate tomorrow, I'm going to go to the Italian embassy. But surrogacy is illegal in Italy, so... I'm not really sure what's going to happen there. I don't even know if legally they can get a Kenyan passport. Um, legal stuff in Kenya is, I don't even, that's a whole different segment that we can <laughs> so do. How long, but so I don't how long wanna... could you potentially be in Kenya now? Well, they said that the Canadian side, um, it can take anywhere between 6 to 12 months normally. So hopefully they expedite it. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. I, I haven't slept in, since the girls were born in November 30th, so yeah, I, don't, I don't even have my head um, on straight right now. I don't blame you. Any uh, parent of a newborn knows just how difficult the first days are without all of the passport challenges that you're facing right now. So I uh, just want to ask you, uh, Joseph, how are you holding up? You've got your mom there. How are you and the girls doing through all of this, just emotionally? Um... Emotionally, I mean, both me and my, my mom is incredible and is literally my light. Um, and we try to be as calm and as peaceful and as loving to the girls. We are. Um, we try. But I mean, they do sense it, especially Friday um, after being at the embassy for nine hours, flights and not sleeping. And we got back to the hotel and my mom collapsed and Mia slept, Stella kept crying and I held her in my arms and I was crying with her. I didn't know what to do, but thank God that the girls are healthy and they're growing every day. And I'm, I'm in all this, I don't want to sound ungrateful. I am so grateful. And if I had to do it all over again, I would a thousand times over because they are truly a blessing. And I've waited for this and wanted this for so long. Um, but they're great. They're amazing. And my mom is a trooper and mm -hmm. I need to make a plaque in her honor, <laughs> a statue. It's, I can't believe it at her age, what she's done and what she's still doing. In fact, I told her, I'm like, Ma, you can go home, um, go home. I'll get a nanny or something. She's like, absolutely not. I'm not going anywhere. This is where I need to be. Well, Joseph, um, it's so great to hear that you have that support. And, uh, yeah. um, you know, congratulations, first off, on the birth of your girls. Yep. We will be tracking the story. Uh, hopefully you do get uh, the paperwork you need so that you can all uh, come home finally. So we will continue to uh, touch base with you for developments. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you.